Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha Kodash. Double honors to the Apostle Elders of Great Millstone. Peace and blessings to the whole elect. <clears throat> the name of the Heavenly Father and His Son are Hebrew, uh, Hebrew names. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. Yah is He, and Hawa means to be. And the true name of the Heavenly Father and His Son is in Hebrew is Yahweh Shai. Yah is He and Yahweh Shai means Savior or Deliverer. You can find out about the true name of the Heavenly Father in Exodus, the third chapter. And also when you go to Yahweh Shai's name, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, his name is a nomen omen, right? When you go to Joshua, originally Joshua's name going to the uh, pretty much Joshua who was second, uh, second to Moses, where you have the book of Joshua, Originally, his name was Hosea, right, which in the Hebrew would be Hawashai. But then Moses put the Yah prefix because Moses wasn't going to go into the promised land. Therefore, uh, Joshua was going to be the one that would deliver the children of Israel into the promised land and fulfill the promise, right, at least at that time. So when Moses knew that, Moses put the Yah prefix in front of Hawashai's name and gave him what? Yah Hawashai, because he at that time was going to be the one that delivers the nation of Israel into the promised land, right? So that name right there is Nomen Omen, name prediction, right? And what was uh, told to Mary via the angel? For he shall save his people from their sins. Yah is he, and Hawashai means savior or deliverer. Again, for he, Yah, shall save his people from their sins. Save, savior, Hawashai, deliverer, Yah Hawashai. That is the true name of the Heavenly Father's Son, right? And those are the names we call upon. Those are the names that we believe on. And those are the names that are going to deliver the elect. Lord's willing, we be a part of that number. But just want to do, you know, a short news and prophecy. I have a couple of articles here and I have something that I found on, uh, on YouTube. I believe it's off of NBC News. So I want to just say, uh, first and foremost, I don't have the uh, fair use thing, but this is just, you know, Pretty much, you know, uh, fair use. Anything that I use here, whether it be off the articles or if I use something off of NBC, is all fair use. It's just for edif uh, edif uh, 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 educational purposes and not anything for profit. So I have two uh, articles here. Both of them are the same thing, but just going to go into them, uh, go into this one and then go into the second one pretty briefly. This is going into the hail that happened uh, this past Tuesday. That uh, was in Texas, and then they also had them somewhere in D.C., if I'm not mistaken, as well, right? And these are the plagues that the Heavenly Father said that he would bring upon the earth, which uh, before uh, before even uh, going into the article, let's get the precept first and then, right? So this is Second Ezra chapter 15 and verse 1. It says, Behold, speak down the ears of my people. The words of prophecy, which I will put in thy mouth, saith the Lord. Right. So these words that we're uh, giving you, these words that we're bringing out to you, when we bring out these, uh, when we do these videos, when we speak this word, when we bring out the Bible, it is not us. These are the words of the Heavenly Father. He has given us what the understanding of how to uh, uh, give us the proper understanding, I should say, of what the scriptures really mean and what they truly are saying, not with what you hear in the churches. This is why you hear such a different message between us and the church, because the church has its gospel, right? It's, and I say that in quotation, its gospel, right? And we preach our gospel, which is the proper or the true gospel, I should say, <clears throat> right? This is why you see such a difference because what? They preach prosperity. We don't preach prosperity, right? We preach really suffering right now, right? Like the saying goes, laugh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, well, actually, no, the, that saying is laugh now, cry later, if I'm not mistaken. But right now, what? Suffer right now, and then what? You'll be able to enjoy yourself later. But right now, in the Christian church, what is it? It's about seeking prosperity, and you'll be able to enjoy that house. You'll be able to enjoy this and enjoy the fruits of this world. But our message is what? Don't enjoy the fruits of this world. Don't enjoy this. Don't entangle yourself with this world. No. Separate yourself from this world, so therefore what? You can be saved for the world to come. See, a very two, two distinct gospels, two different ways or manners of life. One is telling you what? To entangle yourself with the world, to chase the things of the world. One is telling you to separate, to depart, right? Micah 2 and 10, arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest. One, one gospel is telling you that this is your rest and seek the things that would make you comfortable, right? 
And one is telling you that this is not your rest. So again, 2 Ezra chapter 15 and verse 1. Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy. Prophecy means to say before, which I will put in thy mouth, saith the Lord. So the Lord gave us these words. The Lord gave us this understanding. And caused them to be written in paper, for they are faithful and true. See? And everything that you're seeing happening in the world, it was already written, uh, uh, written aforetime. And you're just seeing things now play out because this is the appointed time, like Habakkuk says, right? Uh, Habakkuk, the second chapter, the vision, right? The prophecies is set for an appointed time. And at the end, it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, it shall surely come, right? So now we're seeing the vision speak. Now we're seeing the visions uh, be activated or, 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 or being active. <coughs> uh, so it says, fear not the imaginations against thee, let not the incredulity, incredulity means unbelief, of them trouble thee that speak against thee. So if anybody has a problem with what, the things that we say, don't fear or don't be, you know, moved by the things that they say, right? Why shouldn't you be moved by the things that you say? Or why, wouldn't, uh, why shouldn't you be moved by their unbelief? Verse 4, for all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. See? So just because they don't believe, like it says in Romans 3 and 3, uh, uh, so what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the uh, a faith of the Most High without effect? God forbid. Let the Most High be true and every man a liar. So you see, it doesn't matter if you have people that don't believe what we're saying. It still doesn't mean that the Heavenly Father is not going to do what he said he's going to do. Scripture says the Heavenly Father is not a man that he should lie, neither the Son of Man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Right? So, verse 5 says, Behold, saith the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world, the sword, famine, death, and destruction. For wickedness hath exceedingly polluted the whole earth, and their hurtful works are fulfilled. So this is why the Heavenly Father is bringing these plagues upon the world. Like the brother Bakar saying uh, yesterday at, um, you know, the uh, street ministry, the street preaching, what? That the Heavenly Father is reactionary. You do something and it warrants my uh, my reaction to it. <laughs> if you ever watch like the uh, the Matrix, uh, what was it? Which one was that? Uh, Matrix Reloaded? Yeah, Matrix Reloaded. The Merovingian, he was talking about causality, cause and effect. Pretty much people do something and it warrants the wrath of the Heavenly Father, right? Uh, look at like the flood. Why did the Heavenly Father have to flood the earth? What were people doing upon the earth? Well, the Heavenly Father said what? He saw that the wickedness of man was great and that what? They only sought wickedness continually and he saw violence in the earth. So the Heavenly Father has said uh, it repented the Heavenly Father that he had made man. So when the Heavenly Father saw the violence and the wickedness of man, this warrants me bringing this destruction. They're not listening and they're not changing their ways because don't think that there weren't prophets back then speaking out against us. There definitely was. So those men of the Lord back then that were prophesying, sorry, that were prophesying, speak, telling uh, the sons of God to repent, to stop doing these things, they didn't want, they didn't listen. They didn't want to listen. They want to rebel. So therefore, in their rebelliousness, the Heavenly Father brought the flood. And it's the same thing in this time period. People want to be rebellious. You have, uh, what, it, we're either in Pride Month or uh, eventually going to hit Pride Month, right? And that's one of the things that the Heavenly Father says that he hates is pride, right? Why is earth and ashes proud? So you can see that what? And we're out there, we're the mouthpiece of the Heavenly Father telling people to what? To repent, specifically our people, right? You so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native American Indians, which are Israelites. To what? To turn from your wicked ways, to repent, to turn back, to turn back unto who? To turn back unto him. No longer turning back to God and Jesus Christ or whatever false philosophies or whatever ways that you follow in the world. Come back to your true, uh, to your true heritage, to being a Hebrew Israelite. Come back to Yahweh Bashem Al Shah. Come back to your God. Come back to the truth. Because you have fallen away from it. Right? Mingling in this world. Excuse me. So, that's what we're telling our people to do. But what do our people do, right? They want to keep, they want to what? Turn the shoulder, turn their ear, turn their back on the Heavenly Father. Still want to live their, uh, uh, still want to live their lives in wickedness. Still want to do all these things. So, the Heavenly Father is going to bring destruction upon this place. Right? So again, verse 5, Behold, saith the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world, the sword, famine, death, and destruction. For wickedness hath exceedingly polluted the whole earth, and their hurtful works are fulfilled. 
let's continue going. The point is in, I believe, in uh, a verse 11, but we'll, we'll read through. It says, says, verse 7, Therefore said the Lord, I will hold my tongue no more as touching their wickedness, which they profanely commit, neither will I suffer them in those things in which they wickedly exercise themselves. So what? Heavenly Father's pretty much at this point done. He's telling uh, uh, the prophet Ezra. I'm no longer going to stand by and just let them do these things, which they wickedly exercise themselves. Behold, the innocent and righteous blood crieth unto me, and the souls of the just complain continually. Right. How long, O Lord? When are you going to bring uh, judgment? And therefore saith the Lord, I will surely avenge them and receive unto me all the innocent blood from among them. Behold, my people is led as a flock to the slaughter. I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt. But I will bring them with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm and smite, listen to this part, this is the point, and smite Egypt with plagues as before and will destroy all the land thereof. Now, what land is that talking about? Now, if I'm not mistaken, when Ezra was receiving these visions, I believe this was around the uh, Medo-Persian Empire, if I'm not mistaken, right? I believe Ezra lived uh, through the, uh, throughout the Babylonian Empire and a little bit probably throughout the uh, Medo-Persian Empire, right? So it wasn't talking about uh, ancient Egypt or Egypt of that time. It's talking about modern day Egypt. And when I say modern day Egypt, I'm talking about, or should I say spiritual Egypt, I should say, Salakia, more of uh, the appropriate word to say is spiritual Egypt, right? Or uh, uh, like it says in Revelation, the place which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, right? Spiritually, or if it's, uh, let me go to that actually. Revelation 11, because there's a word there, Salakia says uh i think it says allegorically if i'm not mistaken salakia on that mistake they're saying modern egypt salakia uh yeah here we go oh there there it is so i read it in both verses in the kjv and the nlt i'm sorry yeah the nlt this is revelation chapter 11 and verse 8 and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. The dead bodies is Israelites, right? But it means what? In a dead state of mind, them not knowing who they are, right? Like today, right? Our people refuse to call themselves Israelites, refuse to turn back unto the Heavenly Father. Therefore, what? They are dead from the neck up. Scriptures say, the man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead, right? Doesn't mean actually dead, but what? Spiritually dead. Right. And the street of the city is what is um, is America, which is spiritually or if you read it in the NLT, it says what the city that is figuratively called Sodom in Egypt. It doesn't mean, like I said, ap apologies for before for saying modern Egypt, Salakia meant to say uh, allegorically or figuratively, like it says in the NLT, a place that is called Sodom in Egypt. Now, is America the landmass Sodom? No. Sodom was one of the, uh, and Gomorrah and the other five cities, I believe, Zoboim, uh, Adma, and I forgot the last one, but there was five cities <clears throat> that were near the Dead Sea. America is not that landmass uh, encompassing the Dead Sea, nor is America Egypt, right? Because Egypt is over there in Africa. But what does America do or what has America done that makes it allegorically or figuratively Sodom and Egypt? I don't think I need to explain, especially if this month is Pride Month or if the, if it's the next month. I don't know. Uh, I don't think I need to explain that America is Sodom. But Egypt, Egypt represents bondage in the scriptures, slavery. And who was brought over here on, on cargo slave ships? So-called black people. Right? We were, uh, we were the slaves over here. So that's why it's called spiritually Sodom and Egypt. So now when we go back to 2 Ezra's <clears throat> uh, verse 11... It says out um second Ezra chapter 15 and verse 11 but i will bring them with a mighty hand and a stretch out arm and smite egypt that's talking about america with plagues as before going back to what the first egypt right because the first egypt the heavenly father as i'm gonna uh, get in the in the article what uh there's a pretty much hail coming down like it's the size of like baseballs if, if not bigger than baseballs and the heavenly father hit ancient egypt with uh with uh with uh hail right he hit it with the uh the, uh, the plagues that he uh brought upon egypt and one of the plagues that he brought upon egypt was hail and what you're seeing that happen right now with what spiritual egypt which is america right 
he's hitting it what? Like he says, and smite Egypt with plagues as before. The same plagues that the Heavenly Father brought upon ancient Egypt that you read about in the Exodus with Moses in them. The Heavenly Father is going to bring those same plagues to spiritual Egypt, America. Right? And that's what this article gets into. Right now, this not, didn't just happen on Tuesday uh, on Texas. Sorry, in Texas, happened in, uh, somewhere else as well, which I have that article as well. So it says the hail in Texas was so big Tuesday that it required a new description. Right. It says a string of rotating. I'm sorry, rotating thunderstorms developed across wet across West Tuesday. On, I'm sorry, across West Texas. Excuse me on Tuesday. Um, dropping record-setting hail and prompting, prompting a novel warning message from the National Weather Service. Hail the size of DVD, DVDs bombarded communities to the northwest of Lubbock, shattering windshields, damaging structures, and even leaving small craters in fields and farmland. Right, And that's the, pretty much the size of them things. Right, And probably the picture probably doesn't even do enough justice. But these are the plagues that the have or the uh, plagues that the Heavenly Father brought upon Egypt, and you're seeing that happen upon what? Upon spiritual Egypt. So continue in an unusual turn of events, the biggest hail report at nearly five inches in, in diameter came from me. I happened to be storm chasing and was stationed in the town of Piet, Texas. Hopefully, I'm saying that correctly. About 40 miles northwest of Lubbock where I encountered hail larger than grapefruits. And if you, <laughs> grapefruits are big. So imagine something the size of a grapefruit coming down, falling from the sky heavy with that velocity and speed coming down. That, that will mess up somebody's head. But that, those are the plagues that the Heavenly Father brought upon Egypt. And he's bringing upon spiritual Egypt. I had pre-chilled a mobile freezer down to 24.8 degrees Fahrenheit to preserve hailstones in the off chance that I, happened, that I happened upon something noteworthy. As luck would have it, I did. My report prompted the weather, weather service to issue a warning for hail 5 inches in diameter. Examination of a database of weather service warning indicates that this was, I'm sorry, that this was first such warning among the 122 weather forecast offices uh, serving the United States and its territories since, since at least uh, 2010. While weather service forecasts have highlighted the potential for hail uh, this big in watches, I could find no record of, of warnings for DVD-sized hail. Now, if you remember them DVD cassette tapes, that's pretty much how big this individual is saying uh, how big they are. Right. And remember, hail isn't just, you know, he says it's like the size of a grapefruit. So this, you know, pause, Salakia, I have to say, but pause. This big round thing is just falling out of the sky. Right. And it's, it could do, like I said earlier, it was doing damage to uh, certain properties and things like that. And what it was. Goddamn pause. But it was so big that when, you know, when it fell down, it left craters in the ground. Right. So continuing on rare occasions, weather service meteorolog meteorologists issue warnings for softball sized or grapefruit sized hail. We're going to call it that because I'm sick of saying pause in this video. So grapefruit sized hail, which corresponded to hail that is four or four point five inches in diameter, respectively. Five inch hail is an option for forecasters to select Warren Gen. The program weather service uses to construct and dis uh, disseminate, excuse me, warnings, but no prior instance of such usage was found. Uh, one second, hold on. Let's continue. Uh, let's read from here. It says, upon entering the storm, I had seen that hail as big as softballs was falling. An initial sur uh, severe thunderstorm warning issued at 5.26 p.m., warned of tennis ball-sized hail, the slow-moving storm was only moving at, I'm sorry, was only moving east at 25 miles per hour. At 6.08, I'm sorry, at 6.08 p.m., 
The warning was extended east and three inch hail was uh, advertised. That's around the exact, exact time that the hail, the size of baseballs and a few softballs began crashing to the earth in Piet. Meteors of ice exploded into blurred sh uh, shards as they shattered upon the paved surface in front of me. I could tell a few were, I'm sorry, I could tell a few were bigger than four inches across. I ducked outside once again and found even bigger hailstones. Unfortunately, I couldn't measure the hail at the moment because my uh, ca uh, calipers were buried in the crate. But I couldn't risk leaving the hail outside the freezer for more than a few moments. Instead, I lined up two Hampton, uh, I'm sorry, I lined up two Hampton Inn room keys, 3.375 inches in length. Noted that the largest stone was a little more than 1.4 room keys length. And calculated the maximum dimensions to between 4.72 uh, 4, 4, 4 and 4.89 inches. And I called the weather service again. So basically, going into it, all this, all this stuff is pretty much hail was coming down the size of tennis balls, uh, uh, softballs, and, uh, and uh, grapefruits. And if you know about any of those things, they're, they're very huge. They're, they're, uh, uh, they're large in size, especially grapefruits. And that was the size of hail coming down from a, from a storm that passed. Right? And going back to the scriptures in 2nd Ezra is what? Uh, going back to again in verse 11 says, But I will bring them with a mighty hand and, and a stretched out arm, and smite Egypt with plagues as before, and will destroy all the land thereof. Now, what is this plague, right, that the Heavenly Father is talking about? Let's go back to uh, the time of Exodus, to the time when uh, Moses and the Israelites were in Egypt. <clears throat> Here we go. See, the plague of hail, like the Heavenly Father said, right? I will smite Egypt with plagues as before. Now, again, like I said earlier, and I explained what, this Egypt is not talking about modern day, or should I say, uh, Egypt that is in, in Africa. No, it's talking about spiritual or figurative Egypt, which is America, right? Because again, Egypt represents bondage and we were brought here on cargo slave ships. We were brought into bondage here in America. So this is Exodus 9 and 18. This is the, the plague or one of the plagues that the Heavenly Father hit ancient Egypt with. And you can see that what? The Heavenly Father is showing you a little bit of a sign that, hey, I'm getting ready to hit these... Uh, 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 spiritual Egypt with the same plagues that hit ancient Egypt with. So this is again Exodus chapter 9 and verse 18. Behold, tomorrow about this time I will cause it to rain a very grievous hail. Right? Hey, and didn't the individuals say that what? They were following a, a thunderstorm or something like that? A storm? So what? The Heavenly Father started what? Messing with the, uh, messing with the weather. What? Right? Messing with the weather to what? Create these giant uh, these giant sized hail that would uh, fall upon uh, that would fall upon ancient Egypt, right? And just like we read in the article, the individual was following a giant, uh, giant, uh, a giant storm that well, that storm was producing giant uh, hailstones essentially, that were the size of grapefruits, tennis balls, baseballs, right? So again, behold, tomorrow about this time, I will cause it to rain a very grievous hail, such as had not been in Egypt since the foundation thereof, even until now, right? Send therefore now and gather thy cattle and all that thou hast in thy in, in the field, for upon every man and beast which shall be found in the field and shall not be brought home, the hail shall come down upon them and they shall die. Right? So that's the plague, right, that the Heavenly Father brought upon Egypt, which is uh, what uh, which was the hail. Right, if you read in the NLT in verse 19, it says, Quick, order your livestock and servants to come in the fields from, uh, in, I'm sorry, to come in from the fields to find shelter. Any person or animal left outside will die when the ha hail falls. Right. Imagine the hailstones falling the size of uh, the size of grapefruits, or maybe even bigger than that. You know what type of damage that could do to your head? Right. The damage it can do to people's cars. That's how the Heavenly Father can easily bring judgment. You may be thinking you're going to have a regular day, but now, boom, here comes a, a giant hailstone hits your car, messes up your whole car engine and everything. Now you can't go anywhere. Now you got to deal with a, a, a hailstone messed up my uh, my uh, my car. Now I got to 
find a new car to pay for, or maybe insurance can cover this. That's how the Heavenly Father can easily bring judgment. Just as easy with that. He ain't got to always kill you or something like that or put you to sleep, Salaki, or put you to sleep. No, I could just you know, do these little things that will infuriate you. Make your blood pressure start going up and all that type of stuff. Real easy. Alright, so we'll keep reading. He that feared the word of the Lord among the servants of Pharaoh made his servants and his cattle to flee in the houses. Did I miss? Yeah, yeah. And he that regarded not the word of the Lord left his servants and his cattle in the field. So some of those Egyptians, right, when they heard it, it was like, oh, listen, uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a, uh, what you call it? Right. Right, some of those servants or some of those Egyptians was like, nah, I'm going to be smart. I'm going to take my servants, I'm going to take my cow, and we're going to take them somewhere or put them somewhere or go into, uh, take them out of the field where they won't die. But some of them that didn't believe him was like, ah, we don't believe that. What? They Either their servants died or what? The cattle died. And it's the same thing that's uh, pretty much going to happen here in America. Those that take heed to the word will be safe. And those that don't take heed to the word, right, that don't regard the word of the Heavenly Father, they're going to get caught up out there in that hell. Right? And it's the same thing like what we tell. We're warning the people, telling the people to what? Repent, turn back. Right? Like, uh, like Peter said, save yourself from this untoward generation. Right? But what? You have some people that don't want to regard the word of the Heavenly Father. Therefore, they're going to get caught up in the, in the judgment of the Heavenly Father. But those that regard the word of the Heavenly Father, they'll be safe. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch forth thy hand toward heaven, that there may be hail in all the land of Egypt upon man and upon beasts and upon every herb of the field throughout the land of Egypt. And Moses stretched forth his, his rod towards heaven, and the Lord sent thunder and hail, and fire ran along upon the ground, and the Lord rained hail upon the land of Egypt. So there was hail, and fire mingled with the hail, very grievous, such as there was none like it in all the land of Egypt since it became a nation. And the hail smote throughout all the land of Egypt, all that was in the field, both man and beast. So you see, those that didn't take heed, they got caught up by the, uh, by the hail. Said it smote what? Smote both man and beast. And the hail smote every herb of the field and break every tree in the field. So those hails were so strong that they broke down and took down trees. Right? Verse 26, only in the land of Goshen, where the children of Israel, Israel were, was there no hail. So the Heavenly Father made a separation, right? And the Heavenly Father is going to do that same thing for his elect. While everybody else is going to be taken by the plagues, he's going to separate his elect, right, into certain areas or however the Heavenly Father does it to where they're not going to have to worry about the plagues. They're not going to have to worry about the destruction. The Heavenly Father is going to do that same thing for, for his elect in this time, right? So I just wanted to bring that out about the, about the, uh, the hell, which also, Salakia, it didn't just happen also in, uh, what you call it, in, uh, in Texas, have this here as well. It also happened here, as you can see, Denver CO Metro struck by largest hill in 35 years. So it also happened in Denver as well. So it didn't just happen in, uh, Texas. I'm just going to read through some of this as well. It says, The Denver metropolitan area experienced an intense hailstorm Thursday, which led to the largest hailstones recorded in the country in the last 35 years, resulting in widespread damage. See? Same thing like we heard about what ancient Egypt, the hail did it did damage to ancient Egypt. Broke, uh, broke, uh, broke up trees and all that. Uh, slain men, slain beasts. <clears throat> did damage to the, uh, to the land of Egypt. It says the National Weather Service issued a destructive severe thunderstorm warning for, Den uh, for the Denver area late Thursday evening, emphasizing the life-threatening situation with baseball-sized hail and wind gusts up to 50 miles per hour. Right? Life-threatening. Isn't that the same thing that, uh, the, uh, that the Heavenly Father said through Moses? That pretty much the hail was life-threatening? Pretty much what? The men, you got to bring them in. Uh, don't keep your servants out there in the field. Don't keep your cow out there because if they get caught up by that hail, they're going to get smoked, right? Life, something life-threatening. 
It says the largest hail report in the Denver County measured, uh, measured 2.75 inches in Commerce City. Pretty much that's it. So it also happened also in Denver. Uh, oh, Denver, I believe that's Denver, Colorado. There we go. I was wondering what the CO meant. I was trying to figure out who, what, who's CO in the States. Uh, Denver, Colorado, and also uh, somewhere in Texas. See? So you're seeing what? Like the scripture says in Second Ezra, uh, for the words are faithful and true. Right? The Heavenly Father said, I will hit uh, Egypt with plagues as before. And you're seeing it right there. This is just a small scale of what the Heavenly Father is going to do. Heavenly Father is eventually going to just let loose and really show you that, hey, I'm really going to hit this place with the, uh, with the plagues. <clears throat> now I want to go into what I found on YouTube. Again, this is fair use, but this is from CBS Weekend News, right, June 1st broadcast. And this goes into pretty much uh, the whole thing with Trump, uh, you know, and the, uh, the allegations, if that's the proper word, against him. Former President Donald Trump's historic guilty verdict in New York this week is throwing the presidential election into uncharted territory. CBS's Natalie Brand is in Washington tonight with the latest. Natalie, good evening. Good evening, Nancy. And both the Biden and Trump campaigns are fundraising off this week's historic guilty conviction. The Trump campaign claiming it's raised nearly $53 million since the verdict. And the former president also claiming the conviction will help him ahead of November. President Biden in Rehoboth Beach this weekend steered clear of it's politics Saturday, but didn't hold back Friday. As reckless, as dangerous. It's irresponsible for anyone to say this was rigged just because they don't like the verdict. Responding to Trump's... Well, I'll say right now, we say the same thing, that it, the elections are rigged. Presidents aren't elected, they're selected. And who are they selected by? The elites, right? People put their time and effort and their energy into voting, not knowing that whoever you vote for, whether it be Trump, Biden, uh, Obama, Clinton, whoever these characters that they bring up there, they are just puppets for the elites they are just here to do the biddings for the elites they just give you the sweet words they come and tell you hey i'm gonna do this and hey this country is bad i know that but hey like biden was coming out with what his bill uh build back better or uh bill yeah i think it was build back better plan and all that type of stuff but have you seen things get built back better have things gotten any better things have only gotten worse because essentially that's what the elites want they want things to get worse and really the Heavenly Father wants things to get worse because really, again, this is all the, the, the movie of the Heavenly Father, right? Everything is going in the direction of the Heavenly Father. The Heavenly Father is the one that really wants things to get, uh, like the saying, thing, uh, saying goes, things are going to get bad before, um, things are going to get bad before they get good. So essentially, the Heavenly Father wants things to get bad here. So he's putting the spirit on the elites to do things to what? To make, uh, to make things get worse here in America. Inflation is rising. Eventually, that's going to become hyperinflation if it's not already hyperinflation. So everything that these guys uh, come out and say, whether it be Biden, whether it be Trump, let's say Trump gets back in office. Trump is only going to do the biddings of the elite. That's all he's going to do. He's just a, a puppet, and the elites are just using them. That's all. Right? So it's, it's not dangerous to sit there and say, now, when we sit there and tell you that, we're not saying for you to go and attack these guys or anything like that. We're just telling you the truth of things. We're just telling you how the world works, how things really are. These hidden secrets, these, like, they like to call themselves the Illuminati, right? They like to sit there and, uh, you know, say that they're the light bearers and things like that, but, you know, they, they operate in secret and things like that, right? So pretty much we're just bringing all the, all, uh, bringing things to light and letting you know that, hey, these presidents that you're voting for, that you, or should I say that you think that you're voting for and you think that your vote matters? Because when you know they have the commercials say, your vote counts. Your vote does not count. It's already been decided by the elites, which really by the Heavenly Father, if you understand that. But it's already been decided by the elites who they want in office because they're going to use this next individual, right? To now pr use him to make uh, now move their plans forward for their NWO, for their New World Order. Mm -hmm. That's all it is. It's not here for the benefit. Those presidents that are put there in office are not here for the better betterment of the people. They're put in there for the elites so they can better things or better out the uh, for the betterment of the plans of the elites. That's it. 
They're not here to uh, make life better, easier for the common people or for people in general. And we're just bringing that truth to light. We're not here telling you to attack these men or do anything like that. We're, no, we're just telling you this is how it is and this is how it goes. Rambling remarks. We're living in a, in a fascist state. And false claims following his conviction in New York's so-called hush money trial. They are in total conjunction with the White House and the DOJ, just so you understand. Oh, Upside down flags, a symbol of protest adopted by the MAGA movement on display outside Trump Tower and posted on social media, including by country singer Jason Aldean and the Conservative Heritage Foundation. Division. So you see what? People is uh, pretty much protesting now. It seems peaceful for now. But eventually, you know, like brothers have been saying, eventually this whole thing with Trump could lead to a civil war, which there was a movie called, what, Civil War? Yahushai said that what, in, uh, let's get it actually, in Mark the third chapter, and if I'm not mistaken, the 24th verse. I don't know why. Blue Lair has been acting very funny. Very, very funny. Right, here it is. Mark, uh, the th uh, Mark chapter 3 and verse 24 in the KJV, and then I'll read in the NLT. It says, and if a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand, right? Uh, and if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand, right? And if Satan rise up against himself and be divided, he cannot stand, but hath an end. In the KJV, verse 24, a kingdom divided by civil war will collapse. See? And you're seeing what? The minds of the people are divided, right? And even in, uh, which I'll get that precept as well, Lord's willing, in, uh, in uh, Matthew the t uh, 10th chapter, Yahushua said what? Think not that I am come to bring peace on earth. I come not to bring peace, but a sword. And a sword represents what? Division. One person who has this uh, mindset and another person who has their mindset. And the, what eventually those two mindsets, those two ideologies are going to clash, which is what a division, a, a, pretty much a, 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 what's the word I could use? Let's just say a, a, a collision of, a, you know, different opinions, for lack of a better saying, right? And that's what you're going to see. People who, who think that Trump should be in office because ever since Biden got into office, things have been getting worse. But what, at one point, people were saying that what, when Trump was office and those who followed Trump... You know, Trump wasn't too bad. You know, things were better in America. So, yeah, Trump should get in office and things like that, right? So people are, this This could very well, now we'll see how things go, but this could very well lead to pretty much civil war, division, right? Like it says in uh, Isaiah the second, I'm sorry, not the second chapter, Isaiah the 19th chapter, for I will uh, uh, have uh, Egyptian against Egyptian and they shall fight everyone against his brother kingdom against kingdom and city against city eventually you're going to see that and with this whole trump thing that could uh cause a civil war that could cause more division amongst the people but more not just division where it's like people just having this uh you know i'm for trump or i'm for biden or i'm for whoever eventually it could get violent right similarly a family splintered by feuding will fall apart right some people families are eventually going to start feuding I'm for Trump, and you need to be for Trump too, man. He's better. He's he's what's good for America. Nah, Daddy, I ain't with that and all that type of stuff, man. I'm for Biden and all that. Trump is a little bit too crazy. Look what happened to the Capitol building. Nah, I don't worry about that. It's because the election was rigged and all that. If they ain't rigged the election, that would have never happened. See? Similarly, a family splintered by feuding will fall apart. <laughs> right? Yahushua is giving examples, but hey, I'm giving an example through the Spirit that, hey, that could happen with families that, hey, everybody has their, their ideology. Eventually, families could split apart because of this. Right? And if Satan divides and fights against himself, how could he stand? He would never survive. Same thing with this country. If, if this country is against itself, people are fighting each other, civil war. How do you think that uh, this, this society could survive? When it's, when it's pretty much, because think about it, civil war. Pretty much the what the citizens are fighting amongst themselves. If this, if the very uh, people of the of this city or the people of this country are fighting amongst themselves, how can how can this uh, country or how can America survive? It's destroying itself. See. Division. 
divisions are also widening on Capitol Hill. This is weaponization and lawfare at its peak. This was our tried and true criminal justice system playing out. And Trump congressional ally and House Judiciary Committee Chairman Jim Jordan has already written a letter calling on Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg to testify on Capitol Hill later this month, Nancy. Natalie Brand, thanks so much. Voters have a lot to say about Trump's latest legal troubles. CBS News' Nicole Killian reports from the battleground state of Pennsylvania. Okay. Could have sworn I remember them saying something about the vision, but... I guess uh, either I misheard or I missed it, but let's get into what Yahweh Shai said All right, in Matthew, the 10th chapter. All right, here it is. This is Matthew chapter 10 and verse 34. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth, I came not to send peace, but a sword, right? So for you Christians, this is the words of who you ignorantly call Jesus Christ. You can see that it's in red letter. These are his words. He said, what? Don't think that I came to bring peace on earth, right? Now, apologies for saying this name, but what? You Christians think that, oh, Jesus Christ is all love. God is all love. Everything is all love, this and that. But look, look at what the Lord said, right? You know, again, forgive me for saying those these words, but look at what your Jesus Christ, it, it's in red letter. This is him speaking. Look at what he said. I came not to send peace on earth. He's not here to bring peace on earth. He came not to send peace, but a sword, division, right? And if you, even when you go uh, continue on, verse 35, for I came to set a man at variance against his father and the daughter against her mother and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. So, the, so Yahweh Shai what? Came to bring division, separation, right? The elect will have to separate from the world, separate even from their own family members, separate from their wives, separate from their children, separate from their families, their fathers, their mothers. Now, it doesn't mean that you go and disrespect your father and mother and things like that. But what? You have a difference of opinions now. You see the light. You see the way. And what you want salvation, you want to turn back and, and, and serve the Heavenly Father in truth and sincerity. So therefore what? Hey, hey pops, hey mom, can't do the same thing. I can't, you know, birthdays, can't do that. Can't do certain things. I can't eat this and things like that. You change up your diet, you change up, you know, certain things that you do. Can't cut your hair and things like that. They start looking at you with, but it's like, hey, that brings the division that, you know, like I'll just use myself for example. You know, when I stopped cutting my hair and things like that, my father used to harp on me a lot about the hair. Like, cut the hair, I'll give you money to cut the hair, cut the hair, and all this type of stuff. And I was like, nah. Now, yeah, could I cut the hair low and things like that, you know, without getting a shape up? Absolutely, I could have. But I've always liked, even when I, uh, I used to have an afro back in high school. And it used to be actually bigger than what I had now. But I always liked uh, having an afro in my head. There's something about me personally. I'm not trying to make this about me, but just giving my personal testimony that I always like having an afro. You know, I remember like I remember a, a specific test from the Lord. I remember it was I believe it was sometime around my mother's birthday, and uh, my mother was like, "Oh, so you're not gonna give me a birth uh, a gift for my birthday?" I was like, "No," because you see, uh, all that all that type of stuff can what bring division amongst you and your family. He used to give me birthday, uh, give me gifts for my birthday. Now, ever since he found out, he's like, now nah, he can't do this. Now nah, he can't do that. It's like, ah, nah, nah. See, that brings a division. You a changed person. What's wrong with you? That thing got you making you go crazy and all this. You can't celebrate a birthday. What's wrong with a birthday? You know, especially what, what? Valentine's Day for Eve, Mother's Day. What's wrong with getting your mother a gift for, for Mother's Day? That's so evil and things like that. What's wrong with you? Like, you, you that, 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 that's so stupid. You mean to, you really mean to tell me God's going to have a problem with you giving your mother a gift for Mother's Day? It's Mother's Day. What's wrong with that? Uh, there's something wrong with you. I don't know what type of person you are, what type of this and this type of stuff that you're getting into, but I don't like it. I don't think I want to have anything to do with you. See? Division, separation. That's what your house I came to bring. Not peace. Peace will come in the kingdom. Everybody being together, that will come in the kingdom. But right now it's separation. Not right, right now it's division. Right? And you can see a, a nation right now is divided, which is America. Right? 
everybody has their different ideologies. And like uh, going back to that movie, uh, Civil War, with that guy with the soldier, when the guy uh, tried to calm down the situation, he's like, it's cool, we're American. The guy scratched his beard and is like, okay, what kind of American are you, right? Are you an America an American that's for, you know, for this or for that, you know? And eventually those same questions are going to be uh, what's asked uh, to people. Yeah, you saying you're an American, but are you an American that's for Trump or are you an American that's for Biden or are you an American that's for anything else? And then that's what? That's going to bring again more division. So that will be it for the video. I pray that this video is edifying unto the elect. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha, Kodash. Again, double honors to our apostle elders and great millstone. Peace and blessings to the elect. Shalom.